You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Uh, Samaria Rice, the mother of Tamir Rice and Lisa Simpson, the mother of Richard Rice, uh, who was shot and killed in Los Angeles. A calling for Tamika Mallory, Ben Crump, and a number of others to step down from their involvement in activism in fighting for black people. Now, a statement was released by uh, Samira Rice, and she made some posts last week on Facebook uh, blasting uh, Tamika and others, um, uh, really criticizing them uh, for their uh, work. Uh, that's, that's led to uh, lots of conversation back and forth uh, from a lot of people. And I really thought it's important for us to really walk through this and break this down because I've seen uh, a lot of comments on social media. I've seen people uh, going back and forth. No, go back to the statement, please. I've seen people going back and forth. And so I, I want to break this down. So this is the statement here. The official statement from Samaria Rice, Mother Tamir Rice and Lisa Simpson. Tamika D. Mallory, Sean King, Benjamin Crump, Lee Merritt, Patrice Cullors, Melina Abdullah, and the Black Lives Matter Global Network need to step down, stand back, and stop monopolizing and capitalizing our fight for justice and human rights. We never hired them to be representatives in the fight for justice for our dead loved ones murdered by the police. The activists have events in our cities and have not given us anything substantial for using our loved ones' images and names on their flyers. The attorneys in our fight are also misleading the impacted families. In the case of Tamir Rice, it was even questionable as to whether Benjamin Crump knew the laws in depth in the state of Ohio. I fired him six to eight months into Tamir's case. We don't want or need y'all parading in the streets, accumulating donations, platforms, movie deals, etc., off the death of our loved ones, while the families and communities are left clueless and broken. Don't say our loved ones' names, period. That's our truth. Now, that is the um, statement. Okay? Now, so I was on um, Twitter, and, and, and the mother of uh, uh, Lisa Simpson, she actually uh, posted uh, a variety of tweets um, on this very issue that, uh, that are important. That are important because what she is saying is that uh, they need to be um, paid. They posted this tweet right here, update from Samaria Rice. This was at uh, 134 today. I've been fr I've been contacted by the following people: Patrice Cullors, Sean King, and Tamika Mallory. Me and my team will, 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 be, will be preparing an official response. Thank you to everyone who has joined me and Lisa Simpson in fighting for our sons. Okay, so that was a tweet uh, that they actually sent out. Uh, today uh, on this very issue. Um, the other thing is when you begin to break down what was uh, what was stated, because Samaria Rice um, was really upset when Tamika Mallory was on the Grammys, um, when she uh, spoke on that particular program. And it was uh, doing a performance uh, by um, the baby. Now, I'm going to walk through this and I'm going to show you several things because I think it's important as we uh, talk about this that we really um, properly walk through it so people understand what was said, what was done, and really what is involved. I know, I know Tamika very well. What was interesting about this is that Tamika wasn't involved in the case with Tamir Rice. Tamika didn't travel to Cleveland, wasn't out there uh, doing anything uh, with regards to that case. But, but this was the performance that really angered Samira Rice. Watch this. Uh, not sure why we're not getting any sound. Um... All right, guys, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, but Noah's kicking out sound here. Um, so she speaks at the Grammys. They can't come up with a statement saying you've raised money off of Tamir Rice. 
Tamika did a podcast where she broke that down. So here, we understand the pain and the agony of both of these mothers who've lost sons. But when they call on all the folks they mentioned to step down from the movement, no disrespect to Lisa Simpson or Samaria Rice, but they don't speak for all of the families who've actually lost, lost loved ones. They only speak for themselves. To, earlier, Jamika posted on her Instagram page, she posted a statement from the family of Breonna Taylor. And what, remember, uh, they were in uh, Until Freedom, the group that Tamika works for. They spent a significant amount of time in Louisville fighting on behalf of Breonna Taylor. This was the post. The family of Breonna Taylor fully supports and stands with Tamika D. Mallory and Until Freedom, just as they have with us. If you scroll through the comments, uh, there was uh, Sabrina Fulton, Trayvon Martin's mother. Tamika, I'm still with you because you are still with me. Hashtag say her name, Trayvon Martin. Uh, there was, and I'm looking for uh, the comment I saw it earlier. Uh, th there was uh, another family member who said that since, um, since their child had been shot and killed, Tamika had consistently talked to and communicated with the family. And so as we begin to unpack this, you have this emerging narrative where people are saying, y'all stole all this money. Now, a lot of this tension has been made public when Black Lives Matter announced that they had raised $90 million. A lot of this tension is a result of lots of back and forth uh, on, this, uh, on the issue. What's interesting about this is that the NAACP has actually received more money than Black Lives Matter Network since the death of George Floyd. Is anyone asking the NAACP to step down? Is anyone asking the NAACP they should not be fighting and speaking on behalf of communities and social justice? Why not? What's interesting here is that Samir Rice talks about Ben Crump. L let me explain to y'all, and I don't have to defend Ben Crump. I'm only explaining to you what works. Let me be real clear. What works. When you are hired as a lawyer, and you're out of state, you have to partner with local counsel. We've seen this happen. We've seen this in Minneapolis. We've seen other cases. We've seen this in Dallas. I mean, we can go on and on and on. That's what a Ben Crump will do. If there's a case in Georgia, they will partner with attorneys that are in Georgia. If it happens in Ohio, they will partner with attorneys there in Ohio. Typically, families hire folks like Ben Crump to actually bring attention to their case. That's why they get hired. That's how, that's how this works. This is no different than when Johnny Cochran was alive. Johnny Cochran was hired. Families could have easily hired a local attorney. But they brought in Johnny Cochran, Cochran because Johnny Cochran brings in cameras. To the idiots who are on YouTube saying, I'm always speaking for Ben Crump, y'all can go to hell. I don't always speak for Ben Crump. I'm telling you how it works. 
I'm telling you that whether you hire a white attorney, a black attorney, doesn't matter. If an attorney is licensed in Florida and you hire them, there is a legal process they must go through to work on a case. That has nothing to do with one or the other. See, the issue here is not, oh, you're defending Black Lives Matter. No, the problem is there are far too many of you on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snapchat, on YouTube, who, who comment on stuff and you don't know any facts. Tamika Mallory wasn't in Cleveland protesting during the, Samir, during the Tamir Rice case. If Samaria Rice is saying, don't mention my son's name, okay. Don't get mentioned. Don't be surprised if no one mentions your, what happened to your son and the case, if folks forget about it. Y'all, we, 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 we can literally w walk through all of this. Do y'all understand when we cover the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March? There were numbers of families out there who were not on stage. Not every family story gets picked up. Not every family is going to be on national television. Not every settlement is going to be as large as the next one. I, I want to read... I, I want to read through a series of tweets. Just give me a second. Because I, 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 think, I think this is vital because... We'll be in the walkthrough. And also, um, this is also what happens when people tweet stuff and lie. So, uh, peaceful underscore rule on Twitter, you're lying ass when you just tweeted one minute ago. Roland Martin is making an argument in favor of Tamika Mallory, Ben Crump, and Sean King claiming the tension with Samaria Rice and Lisa Simpson is over $90 million raised by, by BLM. This is also reductive and actually not what Samaria said. You are a liar. And I'm going to call you a liar because you lied in one minute ago. I am fully unpacking what is going on here. You are a liar. So please don't lie. Tell folk exactly what I'm laying out. What I am laying out is that, and I've been covering this, I have been covering the tension that has existed inside of the Black Lives Matter movement. We've had critics on. We've had Patrice Cullors on. What I am saying is, since the $90 million announcement was made, you've had Mike Brown, and activists in Ferguson protesting, saying they should send 20 million of that to Ferguson. So see, don't lie and tell a partial thing of what we're doing. And everyone you mentioned, I didn't all mention. Let's just be real clear. 
So if you're going to open your mouth and say some things, then what you really need to do is speak truthfully. And the reason this is important is because there are people who have committed themselves to social justice and do understand ain't no 401k programs in social justice. It's not. There are people who are out there getting COVID on the streets, getting arrested, raising awareness, doing all of those things when it comes to many of these cases. See, I'm going to deal in facts. And, and the reason I am going to deal in facts is because I need our people discussing this not from a fact-less position, but a fact-based position. Tamika Mallory is not the only activist in America. She's not. Until Freedom, the group she co-founded, is one organization. They are not tied to the Black Lives Matter Global Network. The New York Justice League. I've had them on. They are not tied. Do all of these folks know each other? Yes. First and foremost, the phrase Black Lives Matter is a phrase. The problem is people, people group all of the black activists together all under the umbrella of Black Lives Matter. That's simply not the case. So do you group the National Urban League under there? See, if we're going to talk about people raising money and collecting money, I see the critics, all oh, these folk raising money off of black pain, black death. Let's put it all on the table. Who else has raised money? NAACP, National Urban League, NAACP Legal Defense Fund, Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, a plethora of local organizations. So, so uh, uh, what are we saying? If there's an organization that is in Charlotte and, and they are trying to change the laws to deal with police reform, are we saying that when they give a speech, they cannot bring up certain cases? Okay. Fine, done. Are we saying that they cannot have someone like this on a shirt? That's no problem. Okay, that's fine. I do believe it, believe it's problematic when we say, oh, y'all got to step down. Well, first of all, how do you tell someone to step down from an organization that they founded? I got somebody trying to tell me yeah, I, I see it all. 
some so-called truth seeker. Roland, I lost respect for you on this one. You can't even understand why Mrs. Rice felt that way, watching that Grammy performance turning this movement into some corporate sponsored performance. Well, that's nonsensical. See, let me unpack. You can't complain about corporate dollars when you're asking for corporate dollars. I, I, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to understand here. What are we actually talking about? What exactly is the real thing we're talking about? I, I'm, I'm looking for the because because I I, I think it, I think this is important because I think that the, and I and I've been watching this and I just been seeing way too many black people like really caught up in all of this stuff and not really unpacking this thing. Perfect example. I, I see this tweet about Tamika Mallory simultaneously capitalizing off of their grief. We saw that with Brianna Khan. How was Tamika Mallory? See, let me just go, y'all. This is the criticism I just showed you. Go ahead and show it. So they're criticizing this Brianna Khan. Days of Action Brie Barbecue. Yo! They did this with the Brianna family. They were literally passing out food to the community. So are we upset with the name or with what they did? Are we upset with the name Brianna Khan, Days of Action, or are we upset with the work? And now are we mad with the folk who do the work? I I'm just trying to understand the work that was done. Yeah. Y'all don't remember that if you don't think the protests in Louisville every single day putting pressure on the city, if you don't think that did not play a role in the settlement for the family of Breonna Taylor that went beyond money, I don't know what planet you're living on. How did that protest happen? How do you pay for the billboards? How do you pay for the permits? How do you pay to bail people out of jail who are protesting? How? How can you have a movement if we are asking the people 
to lead the movement for free. See, when we lump everybody together, Tamika Mallory is with Untel Freedom. Sean King is Sean King. Ben Crump is Ben Crump. Black Lives Matter Global Movement is the Black Lives Matter Global Movement. These are separate entities. Do folks cross-pollinate? Yes. Do they talk? Yes. Do they share? Yes. Well, hell, so does the NAACP, the Urban League, and everybody else. How are lawsuits filed? What, what, what do we do here? How do, how do folks begin to do this? See, again, we, we, we can go through this And it's important that we do. So what are we saying here? Are, are, are we saying that we're mad? That a Tamika Mallory, see, let me just really, are we saying that a Tamika Mallory, how dare you speak about social justice during the Grammys? When that presentation reached millions of people, otherwise you wouldn't reach them. Roll it. People, it's time we stand. It's time we demand the freedom that this land promises. President Biden, we demand justice, equity, policy, and everything else that freedom encompasses. And to accomplish this, we don't need allies. We need accomplices. It's bigger than black and white. That's what we mad about? Th that. The, the, the reason I believe We are seeing this, and let me, and, and I said from the top, no one can understand the pain of losing a child to police violence, except those who have lost a child to police violence. We have seen too many mothers and fathers lose children to police violence. There is Samaria Rice, there's Lisa Simpson. There's Philando Castile's mama. There's John Crawford Jr. Rakia Boyd's family. Ayanna Jones' family. I mean, I, we can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. But here's the very basic question that we have to ask ourselves. If you are a black mama and a black daddy and your child has been shot by the police and nothing has been done, who are you going to call? Who are you going to call to try to get justice for your child?
In the past, Reverend Jackson got the phone call. Reverend Sharpton got the phone call. In the past, Johnny Cochran got the phone call. The NAACP got the phone call. I can go on and on and on. Who are you going to call? Because guess what? And I'm going to go to my panel next after this. What if the Tamika Mallory say, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to go work for a voting rights nonprofit. And I can go get me a nonprofit job paying me $200,000 a year, focusing on voting rights. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to focus on that stuff. I'm going to have a health care, a dental plan, a 401k, and I'm going to let somebody else go out there in the streets doing the work. Kim Brown, this ain't called yelling. It's called speaking. Get your facts right. And if it's too much for you, turn your volume down. Ben Crump could very well say, you know what, I'm going to go work on some corporate law. I, I, I'm going to go work on some personal injury law. Who going to take up the civil rights cases? How, how can the civil rights lawyers pay their staff? How can they pay their private investigators? How can they pay their court fees? How can they pay? Please, by all means, show me. All I want to know is all of the people who are complaining. I want you to answer a very basic and fundamental question. If there are no black activists to call, if there are no black civil rights lawyers to call, please tell me how you are going to get justice for your child. Go to my panel, Julian, Avis, Eugene. Avis, I'll start with you. How do we deal with this? Because you got folk who are scared. I don't want to say nothing. I, I, I don't want. I don't. I don't want to criticize. You know these mothers, and I didn't. But I do believe we got to have an honest discussion here. When, when, when allegations are laid out and some stuff ain't true. That truth is vital. So if an allegation is made, you raise money off of my child, you put my child on flyers, you put my child on shirts, stuff like if that stuff ain't true, the record should be corrected. So what do you make of these two mothers saying that Tamika Mallory, Ben Crump, Sean King, Black Lives Matter, Global Movement, they all need to step down from activism in this case? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, uh, I, you know, truth is absolutely necessary. Um, you know, I can't imagine what it must have felt like uh, to get your 12-year-old, in essence, murdered via drive-by shooting uh, by a police officer who, to this day, is still alive, still fine, not in jail, never really received any substantive, um, any substantive punishment for what happened. Uh, and you have a police department that, to me, has gone out of its way to be especially vile to her. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that that's important to, to recognize the context of what she's going through, absolutely. 
But I also think that it's important to uh, not lump everyone in the same basket, as you've mentioned. Uh, I, I do think that it is a it is a truth that there are some people who have risen to fame um, in the sort of Black Lives Matter movement era, uh, and that have been extremely personally successful as a result of that. Um, and one could debate, you know, really uh, the degree to which that those successes that have happened subsequent to that, um, you know, the degree to which some of these individuals have really had a long history. A lot, most of them, some of them, a lot of them have not, okay, uh, and have been able to go on and have very successful uh, careers, book deals, and all the movies. She's right about some of that. But but let's also talk about uh, Tamika. Tamika is someone who's been involved with this work well before the Black Lives Matter movement. She's not a product of the Black Lives Matter movement. She's been in this work, let's be honest, since she was a child. Yes. Her parents... 25 worked, years. Absolutely. Uh, her parents worked in this, uh, in, in the movement, particularly with Nan, and she grew up uh, as an activist, work within that organization. She has personally had a loved one, and I'm not going to go into great detail because I don't even know if she's been public about it, but she's personally had a loved one murdered by the police prior to the Black Lives Matter movement. So she, she knows this type of pain. She's personally experienced it. And that has been a lot of, I believe, her fire around working in this area of social justice. Yes, she, her, her uh, activism started when the father of her son was shot and killed. Absolutely. That's where it started. So, absolutely. yes, Tamika, Tamika Mallory is no different from Sean Bell's widow. Absolutely, absolutely. One I, died at the hand of police, one died to sisterless gun violence. Go ahead. Absolutely. So the father of her child is dead as a result of police violence. Uh, this is something that she has uh, been fighting against for years. Uh, and, and so she knows this from a very personal experience, and as I mentioned, very well before the dawn of the Black Lives Matter movement. As you mentioned, her organization is a distinct and independent organization. It is not a part of the Black Lives Matter network. So the confluence with people sort of mixing all of this stuff together is an unfortunate misunderstanding of the facts. That's just clearly not the case. She was doing this work well before Black Lives Matter. She understands what it's like to have the love of her life murdered by police, the father of her child murdered by the police. And she's been doing this work for decades. So, you know, I think we have to be very careful here about painting with a broad brush and throwing everybody under the bus because we're, we don't know the facts around different situations. It is, it, is, it is possible to critique and say about, you know, certain situations, I don't know about where this money is and all this and all that, but let's, when we're being specific and we're calling specific people out, uh, let's also be clear that we know the facts around that person, particularly when we're trying to project onto them things that they've never been involved in. Uh, Julian, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading here. So these were tweets that uh, Lisa Simpson sent out um, to uh, on March 16th, and, and I, I would love to. I'm going to read them, and I just want to, because I think here these are demands that that they made. Number one, step down from the spotlight of our fights. Do not do any more interviews, make any more T-shirts, or hold any more press conferences or events in the name of our loved ones. Do not use our loved ones to market any events. Number two, Black Lives Matter Los Angeles should pay me, Lisa Simpson, as I am the mother of Richard Risher. They had a press conference for the 49-day encampment when my son, Richard Risher, first got killed. They raised $5,000 for my son's funeral. I never received one penny. There should be accounting there. Was the money paid to the funeral home or paid for the, like, so were expenses paid? Was the money supposed to go to her or did they actually pay for the funeral? Those are legitimate questions that deserve an answer. Number three, financial assistance for the Tamir Rice Foundation 
from all who have explored it, Tamir Rice, Tamika Mallory, Sean King, Benjamin Crump, and Black Lives Matter Global Network. I, Samaria Rice, purchased the building in 2018, and it needs remodeling, operational funds, etc. Housing funds for Lisa Simpson, as I am battling homelessness, homelessness with my current children. My son, Richard Risher, was killed by LAPD, and I was offered no assistance from BLM. I am currently living in a motel with my children and need funds for housing. Um, and then she put support the Tamir Rice Foundation and make all requested donations there. Send personal donations to the cash apps of Samaria Rice and Lisa Lee. So these are the demands that were made. Julian, your thoughts about that and all we're talking about. I don't mean to laugh. I'm just thinking that they're accusing Sean King, uh, Melina Abdullah, um, Ben Crump of being grifters. But these demands sound like griftering demands, frankly. And I don't mean any disrespect. I know that these sisters have to be in enormous pain. They must be in enormous pain. They've lost their loved ones. They haven't gotten justice. They believe that other people are exploiting their loved ones for their own benefit. But as you said, Roland, in the beginning, where are the facts? Now, I think it's perfectly reasonable to ask the folks in L.A. who raised $5,000, where did the $5,000 go? That's perfectly reasonable. But I think that this dissension, um, how can I put it? I can't put it. Um, but it basically, at some level, gives the melanin deficient opportunities to talk about our movement in deleterious ways. Tamika Mallory, as Ava said, I've known her for a while. Great sister, very rooted in struggle. That she was at the Grammys, frankly, was a victory for social and economic justice for Black people. Uh, but, but Lita Abdullah is a personal friend, founder of the Black Lives Matter movement in L.A., professor at Cal State Los Angeles, again, rooted in struggle. She's not making a penny off this. She, in fact, has often been uh, castigated by her colleagues at the university for her activism. So, you know, as you said, people don't get paid for this. Ben Crump, I don't know what he, you know, of course, he obviously has to eat and has to live, but I don't think he's running around giving these people invoices. So I'm just really, um, I guess the word might be disgusted, but that's a little strong. I'm perplexed by the way this is going. I do think that people should be accountable, but I don't think that this venomous attack on principled activists is at all useful. And when you look at the names they're calling out, these are people who put their bodies on the line, put their reputations on the line, put their spirits on the line. I feel so badly for these women. I really do. But that's not on these activists. I do think if there's a lot of money being raised, perhaps there could be some donation. But I, we don't know that a lot of money is being raised. Uh, we don't know what it's going for, Roland. And so, as you said at the beginning, of your statement, we've got to deal with facts here. And I don't think that anybody in this debacle, and that's what it is, is the debacle, is dealing in fact. Eugene, and I I made clear to Patrice Colors in Black Lives Matter, they got to be transparent and accountable for what they do. I said the exact same thing to Derek Johnson, the NAACP. Let me say it again. The NAACP has raised more, has gotten more money than Black Lives Matter. <sighs> more. I know for a fact they've gotten in excess of $100 million since George Floyd's death. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we demanding to see the plan of action from the NAACP? And we should. I know the National Urban League has gotten millions since the death of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And I think if we go back, before that, a year or two, Eric Garner and Mike Brown, we can probably track even more. All legitimate questions. But when I hear people say, 
These folks are profiting off our pain. First of all, you need to be specific who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because, see, Eugene, I remember Eugene. I remember reading stories of Black Lives Matter activists in Boston and other places in 2015 and 2016 where folks were talking about sleeping on couches because they had gotten evicted and they, were, they, they needed dental work, had no dental plans. And then it began to dawn on many of these activists that they had all of this passion to fight in the streets, but then it hit them. They needed infrastructure because you cannot, and let me say this for everybody who is watching and listening, you can not have sustain organizations if they are broke. You cannot ask people to give their time and energy and their lives and say to hell with your family, forget that you might have kids. We want you to give. See, if, 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 if folk Eugene gonna really make me go there, How many black people were asking Coretta on April 5th, 1968? Mm -hmm. How you gonna make it happen with your four kids now that you are a widow? 1967, Dr. King gave the speech at Riverside Church on April 4th, 1967, and the money dried up. The speech is dried up. The only thing that he had when he died was a life insurance policy from the church denomination. And were it not for Harry Belafonte and others who sent the kids to private school, who provided for security, who paid for groceries, Coretta Scott King would have been penniless because her husband gave all to the movement. When he got the Nobel Peace Prize, he gave the money and split it up between the movement. Kept none of it. So I, I, I just want our people to understand that you cannot demand Folk to fight for you pro bono and say, well, somebody else, they're going to pay you. They're going to pay you. Somebody else going to pay your bills. Somebody else going to send your kids to college. Somebody else going to pay your light bill. Eugene, go ahead. <laughs> Look, um, you know, first of all, we, we always start and empathize with the families, right? Um, you know, they have, they have a right to feel the way they feel. They experience stuff that's uh, unique to them. Um, but with that said, um, I think that there's accountability and questions that need to be asked on all sides. Um, the organizations only work when the trust is there, and, and the only way to actually build and sustain trust is through proper transparency. And look, that doesn't necessarily just start or stop with BLM. I think it starts and stops with every organization that's involved in the movement. I think there probably should be some movement accountability project that says, hey, you know, this is what this org is doing, this is what they're funded, this is where the money went, you know, X, Y, and Z. But by the same token, you're 100% correct. You cannot reasonably expect someone to do something for free for you, even if they are doing it for free or giving their time, blood, sweat, effort, and tears um, to fight on your behalf and your cause. Um, you know, for me, you know, I'll, I'll be the blunt one here. Um, you know, a lot of this popping up now cries a lot of, um, you know, give me the attention, give me the attention, give me the attention. Why are they getting the attention? Um, I mean, look, we all know Tamika Mallory and others have been at this long before this was a formalized movement the way it is right now. Um, you know, they were out there on the front lines. And look, you know, I, I, I said this somewhere else. You have the Sharpton Jackson, what I like to call the Sharpton Jackson effect at the play here. Um, you know, people want Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton to show up to their cause and um, lend their name to elevate their cause and give them help. But then the second, you know, that, you know, shine, that light shines on Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, it becomes, oh my gosh, why are they here? You know what I mean? And so 
you know, I think I think you know for a lot of this to work, it has to be effective two way streets and transparency and accountability for everybody. I, I, I got a person on YouTube, Johnny Burton. He said, uh, "What about pro bono lawyers, Johnny?" <laughs> Johnny, let me explain something to you, Johnny. A pro bono lawyer means some other clients are footing the bill for him to take your case for free. Some other know. clients are footing the bill for her to take your case for free. There you go. So, w please, I... I don't understand how you think you're going to pay for office space, staff, filing fees, everything that goes with being a lawyer. Just, whoo, it's just going to appear. Uh -huh. I, 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 don't, I, I don't. I don't. I don't really understand folk not understanding what we're dealing with here. Let me be real clear. I absolutely understand folks making the argument when they say that there are people profiting off of black pain. But you need to be specific in who you're talking to. And if you're going to raise that point, you better have your ducks in a row. You better have your receipts. What you don't do is just throw something out there and then go, oh, it's true. No, 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 no. Because so, so, so here's the deal. If you are... If you are Lisa Simpson, and if money was raised to pay for your son's funeral expenses, you should be saying, how much did you raise? Where did the money go? Mm -hmm. Show me receipts. That's fair. That, that's absolutely fair. But if you want to demand... If you want to demand that, um, you know, money, you know, go towards the building, let, let, let's be... Look, the city of Cleveland paid a $6 million settlement in the Tamir Rice lawsuit. $6 million. Who did it go to? The settlement wouldn't have been there without the help of the folk of Tamir Kamalari and Ben Crump. You don't get the $6 million settlement without people out there protesting, pushing. And where did the money, and where did the money go? You know, Roland, I serve, serve on one of Reverend Jackson's boards. And he, um, as he said, people call him. He shows up. He doesn't ask for money. I mean, he, obviously, the organization Rainbow Push raises money and pays for him and his folks. You know, he needs security. And now that he's been a bit ill, he needs someone to be with him. But they don't say to people, I'm not going to come unless you give me X number of dollars. He just shows up. If people happen to help him with the expenses, that's gratitude. And occasionally, some corporate folks have donated a private plane or something like that. But the fact is that folks don't understand how organizations work and what infrastructure looks like and how a, a Reverend Jackson or a Reverend Sharpton um, moves around the country and what it takes for them to do that. And they don't run around giving people invoices. They come because they're called. Again, sometimes people do help. Oftentimes, they don't. And that's all right, because that they're not necessarily pecuniarily motivated. They're just as motivated. And so, I, you know, when you look at this stuff that's on the internet with these people talking about profiting off of pain, hell, we're all in pain. And the fact is that Tamir Rice, um, all these other young people who've been killed, they represent so many others whose names have not floated to the top, whose names, like Oscar Grant in Oakland, um, didn't get anything, his family didn't get anything, but he is as much a tragedy as Tamir Rice was. And so what I'm fearing about these sisters who are putting this out there is that they don't understand the intersectionality of pain, of how every single time a black man, woman, child is killed, we are all going through pain. And that's why so many of us support Tamika. 
respect and admire Ben Trump, uh, Trump, sorry, Trump, um, you know, appreciate Reverend Jackson for the work that they've done. And I just, you know, it really puts a chill down my spine to see us fighting about pain. The, um, yeah. and let me be real clear, uh, I have no problem at all having Lisa Simpson or Samara Rice on this show talking about this year. But what I want our people to do, and let me be real clear, I want our people to operate from facts. There are people who are sending DMs to Tamika with death threats. Bitch, where's the 90 million? <laughs> she doesn't work for Black Lives Matter Global Network. The life of Tamika Mallory has been consistently threatened because of these allegations. Mm. Let me say it again. The life of Tamika Mallory has been consistently threatened because of these allegations. If we're going to talk about have a family conversation, have it privately. I do believe issues should be addressed. I do believe Mike Brown and the activists in, activists in Ferguson should be talking with the Black Lives Matter Global Network. I, I, I do believe that the other Black Lives Matter chapters should be talking with Patrice Cullors and the Black Lives Matter Global Network to say, hey, how are y'all going to be dispersing funds to chapters? Will it be 500000 per chapter or a million dollars per chapter? How will that be done? Do we have to apply all those different things? There should be a process set up. But my last point on this, and I'm, I want to be real clear, and I need everybody to listen to me clearly. Be real careful telling folk to stop being involved in this fight for social justice. Because they might just do it. And when it's time for the next family to call somebody, to stand with them, to fight for them, to organize protests on their behalf, the call may go unanswered. And then what will we say? Mm. Because nobody Nobody is obligated to fight on behalf of anybody else. No lawyer, no civil rights lawyer is obligated to take a case. No activist is obligated to fly across the country to stand with families. There are many who do it because they have been called to do so because they care. Oh, let me be real clear. There are those in the game who are in this for the check. Oh, let's not make no mistake. There are those who are in the game for the awards. There are those who are in this movement to be on magazine covers and to get invited to Hollywood parties and panels at the Aspen Institute and to be able to hang with uh, rich white elites. Oh, there are those who are in it for that reason. But you better be specific as to who they are and not paint broad brushes. All right, folks, back to that Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win.
This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.